one. Good morning and welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. We are here today to celebrate the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Nancy Ellis and I'm the pastor here and just excited always about coming to the house of worship this morning. We are here, um, um, I, I mean, it's kind of hard for me. Is, can some of y'all move in a little bit? Come on, move in a little bit closer. I want y'all to, y'all stay there, that's fine. But just stay a little bit closer so I can, we can warm it up a little bit, if it's okay. Okay, 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 if you wanna stay where you are. I just, for some reason, I just like it when everybody is kind of together so I don't have to move around so much, but thank God for, for y'all being here today. Um, we are here to worship. And if we have any announcements, do we have any announcements this morning? Any announcements? No. Anybody else? If yes. Anyone wants to take them home today, or they're welcome to take them home. Okay, so the, the poinsettias are here. If anyone wants to take them home today, you're more than welcome to do that, or to even take them to someone who's uh, shut in. That would be a great idea. Amen. Well, let us begin our worship service this morning with our call to worship. If you're able, stand and we'll begin together. Lord of hosts, from sunrise to sunrise and generations to generations, we are your people. You have been with us wherever we have gone. You will be with us wherever we may go. You planted us in a land flowing with milk and honey. Then you planted your salvation in Mary's womb. Jesus, who is the Christ, is planted firmly in each one of us. Our souls magnify the Holy One. Our spirits rejoice in God, our Savior. Amen. Let's uh, continue with our opening prayer taken from Second Samuel and from Luke. Beloved Holy, Holy Lover, we, we welcome, welcome you, you to our house. Our house. The, the sacred, sacred space, space we, we have built to gather, to gather together as, as your people. people. Here we come to offer you our thanksgiving and praise in response to the abundance of your creation. Here we come to share with you our prayers of confession and petition where they lie heavy on our hearts. Even knowing that you are here and everywhere, we come longing to hear you say, I am with you always. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing our hymn of praise this morning, Joy to the World. And you'll find the words on the screen in front of us.
we will have the lighting of the Advent candle, the shepherd's candle, by the gas. We began the Advent season with the prophecy candle, the candle of hope. This flame rekindles our trust in God, who is faithful to his word through the prophets. God told his people what to look for, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Next, we lit the Bethlehem candle, the candle of peace. Bethlehem was a small, quiet agricultural town whose name means house of bread. And in his house was born Jesus, the one who revealed himself as the bread of life. He came to nourish, nurture, and bring peace to his people. We call him the Prince of Peace. Next, we lit Mary's candle, the candle of joy. When Mary was chosen to be the mother of God's son, she said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. We, too, know the joy of Jesus' presence when we invite him into our hearts and lives. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. When the angels had left them, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go see this thing that has happened. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. Shepherds spend much of their lives separated from family, neighbors and towns, people living on the hillsides in solitude with their flocks. Their flocks is the care, their focus is the care of the sheep and little lambs finding water in new fields for grazing, as well as, be, as well as being alert for wild animals or other dangers. The shepherd gives up his own life for the good of the flock. According to Jewish history, it was on the hills of Bethlehem that sacrificial lambs were raised for the temple. Unblemished, firstborn male lambs were wrapped in swatting clothes, cloths to protect them and carried to Jerusalem as Passover sacrifices. God's pure love in Jesus was first revealed to the lowly shepherds on the Bethlehem hillside. They were the first visitors to encounter the love of God, a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Their hearts were so warmed by his love, they had to tell everyone what had happened to them. It was his cousin, John the Baptist, who introduced Jesus as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. It was to the shepherds, this lamb was presented, the one to be offered for all time, a single sacrifice for sin. What wondrous love is this, O my soul, that calls the Lord of life to lay aside his crown for my soul. Let us pray. Loving Father and creator of us all, Give us wisdom to open our hearts this Christmas to the fullness of your hope, your peace, your joy, and especially your love as given in Jesus. Amen. Let us sing our Advent hymn this morning, O Come All Ye Faithful.
prayer for illumination. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also do it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you are able, remain standing. If you're not, it's okay. We have pretty long scripture. Amen. Our gospel lesson comes from Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 through 7, 8 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may be seated. It's time for our joys and concerns. And I don't know about you, but I have a lot of joys and I have a lot of concerns. Uh, I'll start with the joys. I just want to thank God for being awake and alive today. Um, the, I was listening to a sermon this morning and the pastor was talking about how the grace or the mercies of God are new every morning. And so each day is a blessing to be alive, to be able to breathe. And the pastor was even talking about the miracle of even waking up. The fact that we are in this dream state all night long and God puts life into us again and animates us where we can get up in the morning. So that is the first joy that I would like to share. Um, please pray for Karen, um, a friend who was just diagnosed with lung cancer, stage four, um, Annette, another friend, who was in her final hours of life. Jody, who had uh, surgery a couple of weeks ago, but is still feeling lightheaded. Uh, for Ron, who is on hospice. And for his wife, Becky, who is still in uh, rehab. So please pray for them and pray for Birdie. Uh, as she, we, I believe during the service last week, her brother passed away. Uh, it was expected, but even when it's expected, it's still a great loss. So let's pray for her as she mourns the loss of her dearly beloved brother. And also uh, Brenda is not feeling well today, so she asked that we pray for her. So we got microphones going around, so express what, what your joys and concerns are, and we'll take them to the Lord. Yes. My neighbor John Steiger is home from the hospital. Amen. But he Amen. still needs lots of prayers. Okay. Amen. Anyone else? Joys, concerns, family 
stuff. You know, uh, I know some of y'all are getting together with family. Do you need traveling mercies as you go from place to place? Do we need to pray for that? Anyone? Okay. We always need that. Yes. Absolutely. Always need traveling mercies. Amen. Anyone else like to share joy? I have a joy. I see a baby over there. <laughs> I'm telling you, when that baby walked in this room, my life changed, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna get a chance to say hello, and um, we'll do introductions later, um, but thank you so much for coming today and bringing the baby, baby Samuel this morning, amen. Anyone else, joys, concerns, blessings that God has done for you this week, something that you just can't hold on to, anything. We were able to celebrate last Sunday with um, Chuck's brother and all of his siblings. Yes. And um, he's doing well, but he still needs lots of prayers, too. Okay. And Bransford. All right. Amen. And um, prayers for Julia Bleakley. Julia Bleakley? Janet's, sister. Janet's sister-in-law. Okay. Got okay. some health issues. Okay. There we go. I knew if I waited long enough, somebody would come up with something. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. A hundred years old. All right. Is she having a difficult time, a rough time? I don't know what her status is. Okay. Okay. We will definitely pray. Anyone in the in the choir, Sam? Any prayers? Any prayer requests over here? No. Everybody's doing okay. All right. Well, let's bow our heads in prayer this morning, and we'll take all of these requests to God, who is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. God, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving. For this wonderful day that we have come, uh, you woke us up this morning. You uh, helped us to clothe ourselves. You give us a mind uh, to come to the place of worship and to be with your people. We give you praise and honor for life and health and breath, oh God. And even, Lord, when there are times when we are not the best that we can be in our bodies, uh, when there are, are times of ailing and, and, and uh, distress, we still know that you are constant, that you are a God that never changes, that you are a healer, and that we could always come to you in those times of distress. We thank you for the salvation that you've given us, this gift in this little child that was born over 2,000 years ago. This little child that changed the face of the world, oh God, and continues to change the world. The presence of God through the life of Jesus Christ. And now we are the vessels that you have chosen to bring life and health and breath into this world. And we thank you that you have called us to partner with you in the recreation, in the recreation. God, we lift up the, the needs of those that have come forward this morning. Uh, Nancy is praying for her neighbor. We're not sure of her status, but God, you know everything. You are the mighty counselor, the prince of peace. So we, we put this person in your hands and we know that you can heal, that you can comfort her in this time of distress. We pray for Julia this morning that you would be with her, that you would touch her body, that you would supply every single need that she has according to your riches and glory. God, we lift up John Steiger. That, oh, even though he's home from the hospital, that he's going to need continued care and continued healing. We pray that you would give him peace, the peace that passes all understanding as you minister life and health to him. Karen, we lift Karen up with a diagnosis, a recent diagnosis of lung cancer. Annette, in her last hours. Jody, who is recovering from surgery but still not feeling well. We lift up Ron, God, who is in hospice right now, and we're not sure how much longer he has, but we know that when he leaves this place, that he will be with you. We lift up his wife, Becky, who is in rehab, and we pray that you would strengthen her body and bring back her appetite so that she can continue to live. 
God, we lift up Bertie and, and Dick as they are traveling and with family, and we pray that you would just cradle her in your arms as she is just remembering and lamenting the loss of someone that means so much to her, God. We pray, God, that you would comfort her, that, that you would give her joy, even in this season of, of, of suffering and crying and loss. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Mac and, uh, and um, Brenda. And we thank you for them leading us in our Advent studies. We pray that you would continue to uh, heal his body, that you would be with Brenda as well as they continue this journey together. If there's any other type of suffering in the body of Christ, oh God, you know our thoughts, you know our hearts. We pray that you would extend that nail-scarred hand of Calvary into the life of each and every one of us today and do the work that only you know to do. And we give you thanks. God, we pray for our world. We pray for those places that are struggling with wars and wars and wars. We pray for a respite from the fighting. We pray, oh God, that you would step in and that humanitarian aid would come to the places where it is needed. We pray that during this season, as we celebrate the Christ child, that you would cause people to take a pause from battle and realize that this is the season where we need to look at one another and see one another and have compassion in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us the courage. As we pray this prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to continue with our service and we are going to recite the Apostles' Creed as we affirm our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's, let's recite this together, all standing if you're able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 We are going to be uh, continuing our singing this morning. If you're able to stand, keep standing. We are going to sing The Virgin Mary Had a Baby Boy, which is our hymn of preparation. It is found in uh, The Faith We Sing, 2098, or you'll find the words, I believe, will be on the screen. 2098. Let's sing this song together as we celebrate today.
Well, we have a, a, a blessing, another blessing today. We have a young man who is going to, we're going to split the sermon, and he's going to come up and preach the promise of joy. I would like to introduce to you, for those who, who don't know him, his name is Samuel. And Samuel is on his way to being a seminarian and a chaplain. He's serving in the Navy, and we are a part of the blessing. Come on up to have him here. Amen. Praise God bless somebody. How many of you is glad to be in the house of God? Amen. Yes. Yes, yes, because um, you don't have to do it, but God gave us this opportunity to be here today and to rejoice together and um, give him all glory. So um, thank you, um, Pastor Nelson, for giving me this uh, opportunity to share the podium with, with her. And my wife is here today, um, and I, I'm, I'm glad that she is here with me. Uh, because um, if y'all did not get, if I did not get support from ya, I can get support from her. <laughs> yeah, and my baby and my baby boy is here, uh, Samuel, because we've been trying to gather everything together, but they were here today. Thank you, Jesus. So um, I want everyone to stand, stand up, and uh, let's read this um, Bible verse in the Bible, uh, in the Gospel of Luke. I know my asset is very thick, so please, I will, I, will make, I will try my best to pronounce my word out so you can understand. Yes. So, uh, in the book of, of the Gospel of Luke, and he says that a baby was born. Hold on, please. I'm sorry. Amen. 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 Can I have a baby with me? Can you clap? Yes, please. I don't have one. Can you grab a Bible for me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, please. I'm sorry. That's all right. We got good news. Yeah, chapter 2, and I will be reading from 11 so I can get time to work my case up here. And he said, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated. I want to talk to us about the promise of God. When man fell in the garden of Eden, God made a promise that a redeemer would one day come into the world. And from Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, every sacrifice Every ritual of Jewish worship was a type of con condescending love, stooping to be born. Everything God did was moving inexorably uh, in towards the moment when the baby was entered this world and paid the price to save us from sins. The manger, my brother and sister, the manger was being sacrificed and glorified over the many years of Christmas celebration. And this translation in the Gospel of Luke, they are deliberately um, diminished that era of dignity. Nobody sing away in the feeding trough, which is just the point the Savior who died on a shameful cross was placed in a lowing feeding trough around animals. When he was born, it is not coincidental that the bread of life is laying in the feeding trough. I wish I had the, I had the time to, to break everything down. But for the look, the manger expresses the 
political, theological um, contract between the world ruler Augustus and the hidden and lowing birth of the world redeemer, Jesus Christ. That night, that night in Judea, skies and uh, a mystic um, star dispensed its light, a blind man moved in a sleep and dreamed that he had sight. That night, the shepherd heard the song of host angelic um, quarry. A devil was stirred in slumber and dreamed that he could hear that the mother breastfeeding. The manger laid in sacrifice. Who came to save a man move in the sleep of death and dream that um, there was no grave? Our, our text tells us about the night the father promised was fulfilled. Moreover, it speaks of the a moment when God promised to send his redeemer into the world was fulfilled over 2,000 years ago. Think with me for a moment. Uh, the place where this baby was provided, the fact that Jesus was born in Bethlehem is not coincidence. Micah was, um, chapter 5 and verse 2, but put Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though you are small among the queens of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origin are from old, from um, ancient time. From King James, he says, from everlasting. Her God used an unwitting Caesar to accomplish divine purpose so that his child will be born. In the city of David, Mary returned to his ancestry, home in Bethlehem. Caesar may have been a um, ruler, but God was overruling. Caesar may have been um, in charge, but God was on the throne. Before I move on from um, that um, place, my brother and sister, I want you to, uh, to see in your own life, how God has overruled some situation to get you to the position that you are in right now. You are where you are because you, uh, you are not that smart. It's, it's some people smarter than you that God pick over them to bless you. You are not where you are um, because you went through college, because um, you live in a certain community, or because you were born into a certain family. God just overruled some situation to navigate events in life, in your life, to bring you to where um, you are right now. Because while you were going through it, you couldn't understand what God was up to. But now that you are on the other side of it, you know it was God that was providentially um, arranging circumstances. It was not a divorce, it was a deliverance. It was not a setback. God was setting you up and it was not um, heartbroken. God was mending your, your mind and your heart to make you recognize that sometimes you got to go, just go through some stuff to come out on the other side of um, testimony that, can't, that God not only ruled, he overruled. I don't know if, if, you, if, you, if you ever thought about it, but not only uh, do I thank God for the prayer he, did not, he, don't, he doesn't answer. I thank God for the prayer he didn't answer because there are some things I do not need. And, um, uh, and, and God knew I did not need it. But he went um, after it, over nevertheless, and got it, and um, was sorry after afterward. The manger is our is our savior, and the and the theological term for that name Jehovah is our salvation. It's really a testimony, and there is uh, the the testimony that church was in Christ um, Jesus uh, 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 reconciling the word back unto him. Simply, church, God had to offer himself unto himself so that you and could be a recipient of a grace 
went in, bestowed to labor. No wonder Jonah say that salvation is of the Lord. All it means. Church is God had to um, uh, uh, compassitate to take your place because you couldn't do it yourself. He, 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 was, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Here is why he had to do it. For as church, because, because if you have somebody to do it, they won't do it. They don't have the power to do it because he had to do it on his own. Abraham couldn't do it. Isaac couldn't do it. Jacob couldn't do it. Ezekiel couldn't do it. Daniel couldn't do it. Hosea couldn't do it. Jonah couldn't do it. Micah couldn't do it. Naomi couldn't do it. Haggai couldn't do it. Severiah couldn't do it. Zechariah couldn't do it. John the Baptist couldn't do it. Peter couldn't do it. Matthew couldn't do it. Her Mark couldn't do it. Luke couldn't, couldn't do it. And John couldn't do it. Paul couldn't do it. So God had to do it himself. He got, he got to, he, he, he has to come through nine months of, a, 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 of pregnancy and to, to take it over himself. The promise today is that Jesus was born. Thank you so much. I'm true. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, we're talking about cross-cultural ministry. This is what it is about. Okay, he said in the very beginning, he mentioned his accent was thick, and it makes us, you have to hold on and listen very carefully. And that's the way it is when we do cross-cultural ministry. It's a blessing that God has brought you here, and we thank you so much for that powerful word. Nobody could do it for Jesus, and you spelt, you spelt it out very plainly. Thank you so much. Amen, amen. So well, I'll keep on. I don't know if I can, I can top that, but I wanted to say, what child is this? What child is this? I, you might be asking, and I'm going to say, maybe I should say, what kind of child is this? This little baby, this is no ordinary baby. This child was born of a virgin, y'all. Mm -hmm. Unheard of and not heard of since the day he was born. His birth was no secret because the prophets, Isaiah, you know, announced his birth over 700 years before he was born. There was no need for a reveal party because we already knew that it was going to be a baby boy. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. This child is coming from royalty, amen? amen? A descendant of King David, and he would have four different names, just a few I'll, I'll mention, four different names. One of the names is Wonderful Counselor. This baby Jesus would become our Wonderful Counselor. A man of infinite wisdom, amazing the crowds. Wherever he went to preach, folk followed him. Wherever he went, holding on to his word, speaking with power and authority, unlike the religious leaders of his day, because he is God in the flesh. This child will know everything because he is God. This baby will grow up to be also the mighty God. He will preach with authority. He will announce his deity to those who listen to him. And it will become obvious to all of those that follow him that he is God. Okay. This child will be a healer of the sick. This child will be able to raise dead folks and gives the, forgive the sins of many. And this baby will be called the everlasting father. Think about this. The everlasting father. As a father takes care of his children, Jesus will take care of us. Because of his great, unending love, we will never be abandoned because of the baby. Prince of Peace. This baby will bring well-being and right relationships between us and God. Prince of Peace. The peace and the, 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 that, that Adam and Eve lost in the garden. When our parents sinned against God, he's coming to restore what was lost. Oh, what a wonderful child. And then we mustn't forget the angels. 
the angels that made the announcement. We know that Gabriel brought an announcement to Zechariah. Gabriel stopped by to talk to Elizabeth to let her know what was getting ready to happen. Gabriel talked to Mary, and then Joseph was approached by an angel, but we're not sure the name of the angel. Each visitation, they were told, do not be afraid. Rather, the angels were bringing good news, no condemnation, but good news. Tidings of joy and celebration, amen. amen. The angels came with a sign of promise, amen. The shepherds looked up, and around them they could see the angels, multitudes of angels, and there was joy in the air. Today is a celebration of the birth of Jesus. And so I want to just say, happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday. Amen. Today is a celebration, and most of us are going to be celebrating with friends and family, and many of us will be spending time alone, giving and wrapping and unwrapping gifts, preparing sumptuous meals and eating meals with family and friends. We celebrate the giver of all gifts today, our Savior, who loved us so much. And Jesus, the light of the world, pierced the darkness to come into time and eternity. We're just a few hours away from Christmas Day. For some of us, there's some last minute shopping to do, but I have a suggestion. I know of a gift that you don't have to wait in lines for. I know of a gift that won't cost you anything. I know of a gift that you don't have to get wrapping paper and bows for. And that gift is the gift of Jesus Christ, a gift that is priceless and the gift that will last for time and eternity. So how do you give this gift? Well, while you're sitting down with your friends or family, especially someone who's hopeless, let them know where your hope comes from. If you run into somebody who feels helpless, let them know that you know the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the one who knows all things. Do you know someone who is depressed and needing guidance? Jesus is the answer. Let them know that the mighty counselor, unlike other counselors, is available day and night. Amen. And then while you sit by the fireplace or the fire pit, bring back a tradition that has often been lost in families, where we sit down and tell the Jesus story, the story of Christmas from Matthew or Luke, and, and bring back that tradition. Open up your heart, open up your Bible, share that story to your children, your grandchildren, your nieces and your nephews. Thank you, God, for bringing us Jesus. And I want to say happy birthday, Jesus. We love you. Amen. Let's continue our service this morning. Today, or tonight, we're combining both services. We celebrate Christ, the bread of heaven. <clears throat> Who on the night that he, before he was arrested, were daring to love everyone more boldly than others, he took the bread. He took the bread, he gave thanks, he took the cup, saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, the covenant, he said, is sealed in my blood and it's shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you get together, do this in remembrance of me. And so we eat the bread, we drink the cup. So what I want you to do is to come forward. And we have these elements here. Let's start um, with this side and we'll come forward. And I want you to come and take one of these cups with the elements inside. And I want you to grab a candle and just come back to your seat with that. So let's start on this side. Come on down and grab the cup and the drink. Thank you. Thank you. Bread of heaven, let us not be unchanged by tonight. Let us not, not pass by, by the table in silence. Let us, us not leave the table empty. Dwell, Dwell in our hearts and shine in our lives that we, we may know your deep, deep, deep peace and, and share it with the world. Fill us with your love that we might walk hand in hand with you all of our days. We pray in the holy name of the Christ child, born for us this night. Amen. This time you will have the lighting of the Christ candle. As we stand on the threshold of another Christmas day, we light the Christ candle as a reminder that Jesus is with us always, bringing light and life. Emmanuel, 
God is with us. We are so loved that God sent his precious one and only son to bring life and light into the world in this love. Jesus gives hope in our despair, peace in our unrest, and joy over our trials. From John 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. From Luke 2, Joseph went to Bethlehem to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in a cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Jesus is the light of the world who comes to bring salvation and new life to all who would receive it. And to his followers, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let us pray. Our loving Father in heaven, we thank you as we celebrate the first coming of your son, Jesus, to, to bring light, restoration, and new life. Give us the wisdom to open the doors of our hearts to receive our Lord once again this Christmas. May our lives be acts of praise and worship to you. Help us to share the light of Jesus that others may come to know his love, his life, and his light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Now let us prepare to light our candles.
Before I do that, I want to say Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you so much for the cards, the gifts, the well wishes, and thank you so much, Reverend, for bringing in our word today. Can you tell us your wife's name? Introduce her to us, please. Yeah, my wife's name is Brittany. Brittany. Amen. Well, welcome, Brittany. And who's beyond the blanket over there? Samuel Jr. Amen. Well, welcome and thank you so much again for gracing us with your presence. Let's all bow for the benediction. May the Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessings of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain upon you always. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Be blessed and have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Thank you.